Alright everyone, my name is Solomon, better known as PCG here on YouTube, and welcome to day 24 of our journey to Platinum here in Elden Ring. So, <clears throat> at the end of the previous episode, we defeated the Tibia Mariner here in Summon, Summon Water Village, and uh, today we're going to run through this area, clear everything out, grab all the items that can possibly be had, and then what we're going to do... I can't even open my map. I was going to show you where we're going to go. But we're going to head up uh, basically this slope that's behind the village and uh, work our way up towards Stormhill. So hopefully we'll clear all this out today and uh, and then we will be able to head on to Stormhill. And I believe that there's... Now I can open the map. Yeah, so we'll, we'll clear all this stuff out and we'll go across this bridge. I think there's a pumpkin head here. And then I think over here is where we first encounter Alexander Warjar. So, that is the plan for today. So we're going to we're going to make this happen. And this is a relatively large village, I think. So I want to go through each room around here. I think there's some some items scattered about. And uh, we shouldn't have to worry about too many enemies because the uh, the boss is done, um, but because it's because it's summon water, I think, and there's a couple like little graveyards in the village. I would assume that we're probably going to encounter more of those who live in death in a couple of these spots. And uh, I swear, every time every every time we get to <clears throat> a new area that I haven't been to in a while, I get so excited to explore it. Because I, I get excited for all the things that I've forgotten. Oh, and we're actually we're already on the other side of the village, so I mostly need to, to run through the middle. I just figured I'd kind of do these outskirts a little bit real fast, too. And uh, up that way, there's... So we've got that little graveyard there. I know there's definitely those who live in death uh, hanging out around there. And then right next to it, there's a merchant. So I don't know <clears throat> what all he carries. But I'm sure he's got some good stuff. We're probably gonna, we're probably gonna uh, be a patron of his by the time everything is said and done. I also just noticed there was a grace back there that I did not realize was here, so that's nice. I think that that's the only grace on this little section of land. Even though this is kind of looking at it on the map, it's a pretty big, it's a pretty big section. But it's another one of those areas that. There's really not all that much to see. So, we should knock it out pretty quick. And I'm just uh just grabbing all the items, making sure we making sure we got every material we could possibly ever imagine. Can I make it across here? I sure can. Look at you, Torrent, and your your strong spectral steed legs. How many <clears throat> Last time I looked, I have a ton yeah, I got 62 of these right now. So we can probably, if I use all those, I can probably probably get a level at least. Um, so let's let's work our way through the middle of this now that we're on the other side. We've kind of gone all along the outskirts and the shore and stuff. <clears throat> and once we get to the other side, we'll also grab that grace. So let's see what we, what we got in here. I know, I'm pretty sure that there's an item back here. Um, so, sometimes before these episodes, I think about things that have happened in the past that would be fun to talk about, specifically for when we're kind of just exploring an area that's just relatively open and there's not all that much going on. So, rather than just mumbling to myself about nothing, I always kind of think of, of, of stories and stuff. So, something I was thinking about, <clears throat> and I think part of what made me think about this, is in Bloodborne, there is a... When, when you go into the Forbidden Woods, there is a... That, that whole section is comprised of, of snakes, basically. Um, so you've got snake men and stuff. Snakes burst out of their heads and all that. And it got me thinking about this time when I was a kid. I was probably... It's probably somewhere around... Oh, is he? he look at you! Look at you showing up. Showing up and showing out. So I think I was somewhere around 10 years old, probably. And, um... My, my dad one day... Uh, he, he was working at 
a church at the time. And I think he went to pick up some, there was like chain link fence all rolled up in the back lot. So he was going to, to pick it up. I, I think he may have been taking it to a junkyard or something like that. And uh, so he, he gets all this chain link fence, um, gets it into, I think he was driving the family's minivan at the time. So he gets it into the back. And then uh, while, he's, while he's driving, uh, he noticed that something went across his foot. And uh, based on the context I've already given, you can probably guess where this is going. Uh, and I think at first he kind of didn't think too much of it. I mean, while you're, while you're driving, you're not really looking at your feet. So he noticed that, there was, that something went across his foot. Upon further investigation, there had been like a garden snake inside of... Uh, oh, look at this. There was a garden snake inside of the fencing that he didn't know about. Because, again, it was all just rolled up. So he put it inside the car and went about his business. And so there was a garden snake that had crawled across his foot. So he brought that home and uh, just put the snake in a box, basically. Um, it was one of those um, just, like, storage boxes. the one, The plastic ones that you just put a... You just put a lid over, usually store clothes or toys or whatever in it. So put it in there. We kind of kept it as a pet, which was kind of weird when you think about it, considering that it was just a garden snake. Um, and I think we set it we set it out on the front porch. And one, one morning, I went out there and looked at the snake, and I noticed that there were, there were like 16, I think we counted, uh, green turtle talisman. Does that increase my stamina recovery? Yes. Cool. Um, so there were like 16 little itty bitty snakes in there. Come to find out, it was a mother <laughs> and she was pregnant when he initially found her inside his car. And uh, so she gave birth to, to like 16 snakes. I did not realize that, that snakes gave birth to that many children at once um but then we we basically just we kind of just left them all in there and in some ways this is a it, it it it's not really a happy ending um because since it was a garden snake and we weren't really treating it like a pet necessarily it was just kind of in that box uh the snake eventually got hungry and because no food was provided to the mother snake, uh, one day we went out and all of the baby snakes were gone. Uh, so the only the only explanation we had is that she ate all of the baby snakes. So ends on a little bit of a sad note there, and that made me learn <laughs> don't keep as a kid. That made me learn don't don't keep a garden snake as a pet, especially when you're not going to feed it. Come on, guy, just stand up. Uh, so, just it, just a good little thing to know for you in the future, in case it's something that you ever run across. If you ever have that that uh, burning desire to capture a garden snake and keep it, uh, just don't. That's that's my advice. And so, moral of the story is don't. Don't keep it. And so I think eventually what we did was once we realized that and kind of realized the situation that Mother Snake had found herself in, we eventually just went to like a lot where there were woods and just released her there. So I hope she's I hope she's happy and healthy now. I don't know how long Garden Snakes live. She's probably dead. Because that was like 14 years ago. So I'm, I'm guessing that she is no longer with us. And honestly, if I really think about it, she may have not been with us for very long in general. Because I don't know, when she was released, something, something else may have eaten her. And she got a taste of her own medicine, if you know what I mean. Uh, okay, so we got this grace. And... The village is done, so this is Summon Water Village outskirts. Sweet. So let's see, we're gonna check all along this land as usual. I'm going to overcheck everything just like I normally do, and just make sure that, that there are no items hidden about. 
and like I said, we'll head up towards the the top. There is where that uh, graveyard is, as well as where the merchant is. He's on basically just just this side of the bridge. So as soon as you get to the bridge, he's right there. And uh, I think the main thing we have to explore around here is is these ruins. But I don't I don't really know if there are any. We got Trina's lilies. That's this is what I was literally gonna say. I didn't know if there were <clears throat> there was anything that spawned, and it looks like it indeed does. Oh my gosh! You and your double machetes. There you go. Oh, there's four. Oh, there's five. They just keep on rising, keep on living in death. Um, and to my understanding of of the lore of of Elden Ring and, and the lore specifically of those who live in death is and I might just make a complete fool out of myself even trying to describe this because I, I don't fully know um, but I think the lore behind those who live in death is that the idea behind the Erd Tree and sort of like the, the dynasty um, or the kingdom that Queen, Queen Merica set up is that when anyone dies, uh, no matter what creature you are, no matter what race you are, um, like races in, if you're a tarnished or if you are, uh, I know, I know there's those, uh, those guys that have like the horns growing out of them. I can't remember what those are called, but like, regardless, whoever you are, when you die, the point is that your, your soul essentially is supposed to go back to the Erd Tree. And be absorbed into the Erd Tree. So, they within like the the Erd Tree religion, um, it's it's said that that's the most honorable honorable way to die is to have your your life reunited with the roots of the Erd Tree. Um, and those who live in death basically have basically have decided to. Oh wait, so this leads. Look at this. I didn't realize that this is where this was. Look at that. Um, we got the the artist shack right there. So they've decided to uh, go against that, and instead, uh, their souls live in death. So their souls are never reunited with the Erd Tree, and they just continue to live in death, which is where they get their name from. <laughs> so it's kind of an interesting, it's sort of an interesting idea behind those enemies. Um, and that's what I, that's, that's something that I, I think is, is cool about the enemies throughout this game, is that most of them have some sort of purpose behind them. It's like, you look at them and you go, okay, wow, that particular enemy is designed cool or it has a cool mechanic or whatever. Um, but usually, this one's sleeping? I didn't kill him, right? He is sleeping. Sorry for the rude awakening, my friend. Um... So you look at them and, and you're like, wow, those are designed well. But there's always a reason behind their design. And behind why they're in the world, which is which is cool. Sort of adds a level of... Adds a level of immersion and reason behind what you're doing throughout the game, I feel like. Um, oh, he's got an item on him too. The, the rune bears, though, I don't... I think I think the bears are kind of just bears. <clears throat> I don't know that there's a lot going on with them. I know the rune bears have some sort of lore behind them though, because they're the, like the big ones are the rune bears, and they're called that because of the because of the rune shape that's that's on their chest. But I don't know exactly why that's there. So that would be that would be an interesting piece of of lore to better understand. So right here, this is the this is this graveyard. I think there's a few guys that rise up out of here. Let's go check all this over here though. Cause this So that's done, everything down there. Oh, there actually is. There's a Are there items over here? There are. Sweet. So this landscape actually does have some stuff in it. I was thinking there was basically nothing here. So is that what we're looking at? Yeah, that's that upper portion there. So then above that is where Stormhill begins. 
Uh, please no. Please no. You're gonna have to... Yeah, you're gonna have to cool it with that, my friend. Dang it. Can't hit him. There you go. I'm not sure how I got him there, but... Got him on the backswing. What you got for me? Golden Rune 1. Nothing special. So this drop down here leads to... That's that whole area... Yeah, where those bears are at. Okay. I just always like to check that to make sure it's not something that I can only access from up top. And then that's... That's part of Murkwater, technically, I think. Even though it's like an upper portion of Murkwater. <clears throat> and that's over where the cave is. Is that... That one cave all the way at the back. Oh yeah, there is. There is a pumpkin head up there. I see him. Oh, I hear him too. Slamming his face on the ground. I'd be interested to, to see what the lore is behind the, the pumpkin head too. Because... What is his purpose behind... Slamming his face into the ground... For all eternity. I'm sure... I, I mean, no matter what, the pumpkin heads... They've got to have some major, major headaches. Because I know I, for one, when I slam my head against anything, especially for an extended period of time, I don't come back up with, with just a, a nice, good feeling in my skull. It's not exactly my idea of a fun Friday night. Look at these turtles. I'm just going to take your neck real fast, please. Oh, Andy gave me a strip of white flesh. That only does... Oh, it does kill him all in one. Sweet! Something that I... When I picked up this, this torch uh, a couple episodes ago, I didn't realize that I don't think that the basic torch that I had even has the ability to blow fire. For some reason, I was thinking that all of them did. I think with the other torch, the only option I had was was basically to to hit things with the torch. I don't think that it could blow fire. So that's another fancy thing about the steel wire torch. All right, let's talk to this guy. Oh dear, am I? I terribly sorry. Uh, are you here as a customer? Sure am. What you got? All right, so he's got. Pickled Turtleneck, Smithing Stone 1s. Ooh, I'm definitely going to take that Cracked Pot. Matic Warrior's Cookbook. We'll definitely take that. He's got a Short Sword. Flame Chariots. I don't need that. I already know how the Flame Chariots work. Bandit Mask. He's also got Bolts, Arrows, and the Halberd. Halberd takes 14 Strength. That's interesting. I must apologize. I, 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 I'm, I'm afraid I've very little to offer. No, that was good stuff, man. Let me see if he says anything else, though. He doesn't say anything else. Alright, so I got everything I, I want from him. And then let's see what that cookbook will allow me to make. So was, was it Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 4? Wait, wh which one was it? Because I already had that... Had that. Um. Yeah, it must have been. Maybe it was this one, the beast beast lore pot. Regardless, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're missing seven right now. Eight, nine, and then those other ones. Like I said, I think you find them. I think we'll find them up on Storm Hill, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm trying to, <clears throat> because we're 100%ing, I'm trying to make sure that I get every single cookbook as well, obviously. So that we we see the locations of all of those and and uh, we're able to craft everything in existence by the time that this playthrough is over. Even though I find that there's a lot of things I don't necessarily craft, there's just certain items that, that for my playstyle aren't always necessarily useful or... I, I tend to do the thing, too, when I play games, especially open-world games, where I collect so much stuff, clearly, but then I don't always utilize everything I've collected because 
I get in that mindset of, oh, like, what if I, what if I need that one day? I don't want to waste this. I only have five of them. But then I just never even use them. So it's kind of silly that I even have that mindset. But I think that's sort of, I think that's sort of a common thought process when playing open world games. I think I remember, I remember seeing a, it was like a reel or something one time of someone talking about how they'll go through an entire game going, oh, I don't, like, I don't want to use this even though I'm in the middle of, of a really important part of the game. Like, I should use all the materials I've collected. This would help me immensely. But then instead, you just end up essentially saving them all for the last boss fight. And then you have all this extra stuff that you don't even need. And that, uh, that pretty much tells the story of, of how I am in this type of game. So that's why, too, I've, I have been trying to utilize, as you've seen, some of the stuff that I don't normally use. Um, that's why I've been using the Ashes of War a little bit more, experimenting with stuff that I, I didn't really play with in my first playthrough. Whew, just almost jumped off the edge. And, uh, and so I want to apply that, too, to all this collecting that I'm doing and maybe actually craft some of the stuff that that the cookbooks teach that I, I wouldn't normally craft and not worry so much about running out of resources because I'm clearly not going to. Wait, so this, is this, um... Wait, did I come up here? Is this a whole other... Wait, so this is technically back to the Summon Water Village. And then is this that room... Oh, yeah, okay, so this is just that room that we started in. Okay. All right, so we're all the way back to, to here. What was that that I just saw? Oh, there's an item here that I, I didn't even see. Golden Room 4. So then there, there wasn't anything else I missed in here, right? Did I get everything? Because I could have... Because that's back up to Kaled and where that church is at. Yeah, so this is where we started. I must have just totally missed <clears throat> that little room there. Sweet. So all of this side of the path should pretty much be covered then. Um, <clears throat> on my way back up, I guess I'll just run through some of these bushes, see if I missed anything. And then we'll deal with this this little graveyard that's up towards the merchant. And then we will head on to that bridge and say hello to Pumpkin Man. See what he's got going on. Maybe we'll... Uh, Maybe we'll get rid of his, his migraine for him. I don't have any medication on me, though, so I'm thinking we'll just kill him. And that'll, that'll pretty quickly deal with the migraine. Death usually uh, causes migraines to, to stop. I've never heard of a dead person complaining about, about their head hurting. Or I've never heard of a dead pumpkin man complaining about his head hurting either, so... It applies to non-human creatures as well. Alright, so let's go through this. Kill whatever rises. See if there's any items to be had. Hello! It's kind of nice killing them as they're standing. Man, these guys with the shields, they look like they'd be so much stronger, but they, they're still one-hit kills. So they still are not even, not even a threat. And I'm, another reason why I'm kind of excited to get to some of these areas like Storm Hill and Stormvale Castle and things like that is because I feel like I feel like I'm so leveled at this point that some of this stuff is just kind of like run through and swing because some of it's some of it's really easy low level stuff at this point so sometimes that almost kind of makes things feel a little less fun and exciting. Goodness. Can't hit him. Gotcha. Alright. Alright, so that should be it for that. I guess there's actually nothing in here besides those guys rising out of the ground. Alright, so right here we can see down into Merc Water where the land octopus guys are. Yeah, and that's all stuff that we've done. What do, what do you got here? Smithing Stone 1. We're still in Smithing Stone 1 territory. Holy crap. There's a grace on this other side. You know what? I should probably... Let's do this. Before before I deal with him, let's go and grab this grace, because then if I do end up dying, then I can just spawn here. So we've made it to Storm Hill. 
and the storm sure is, sure is raging. Oh shoot, oh shoot, he's gonna keep swinging, dang. Okay, get up, get up, please. Oh my gosh, I couldn't even stand, I couldn't even stand, holy crap. I'm really glad that I grabbed that grace now. Man, look at those tootsies, they are nasty. Yeah, it's, it's a much better idea to fight him off of horseback. Uh, on, on horseback, not recommended. Where did it drop my runes, though? Oh, way over here? Why did it drop them way over here? Okay, go, go. He's noticed me, he's noticed me. Yeah, why did it put him here? Okay. Alright, my friend. Let's do this. Why does he... That's kind of weird the way that he does that. It's kind of creepy how he just, like, raises his head. Oh, my goodness. I keep forgetting how far that swing goes. And I keep hitting his... Hitting his head. Instead. Gotcha. Yeah, much, much easier to fight off of horseback. Sanctuary stone. That must be... The sanctuary stones must be part of Pumpkinhead lore, too. It's something that piece of lore that I am not familiar with. So, now that we're up here, visibility is much less, as you can see. And I've, I've talked before about how, like, when we went through uh... what was it? The, uh, through the Mistwood. Um, I don't love... I don't love areas like this where visibility is so low. I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, it's cool and everything, but for some reason, just the low visibility kind of gets on my nerves a little bit, I guess. Um, okay, wait, so there's, so we can go up this way, but then also right next to where the grace is, there's a path up too. They both lead to the same place, I think, but let's still check this out first. And I, I think, like I said, I'm pretty sure this is where we encounter Alexander Warjar for the first time. And boop him out of the ground. There's also up here a little pond that has that has some octopi hanging about. Yeah, see, you can't even because of like you can't even see the the other areas. Like this is not really an area to stop and look at the scenery and look at where you've come from because you're not really gonna see it essentially non-existent up here which even though like I said it the heavily decreased visibility does get on my nerves a little bit oh wait this is oh yeah there's the pond right there okay even though the decreased visibility does kind of get on my nerves I also like it like it's it's cool still so even still with the aspects that I complain about it's still it's still a ton of fun my eye is itching Everything's so itchy on me all the time with all these allergies. Is Alexander up there? Maybe he's up there. Where is this guy? Oh, did I... Oh, shoot. So he's not here. So did I miss that whole... I missed that whole thing then. I guess because I've come to him so late? Interesting. So I wonder then if he's already shown up... Maybe he already sh he's already shown up at the tunnel. Because there are those... Oh, did that guy see me? I don't think he saw me. There are those tunnels that are... That we found yesterday. That are right near Kaled. And I wonder if Alexander has already... Plopped himself there. He may have. So maybe we should go check that out. Because this, this is the first place I know of finding him. And that's... That, uh, that hole in the ground is usually where he's at. Crap, crap, crap. Yeah, he's usually at that hole in the ground. Um, and you gotta... You gotta hit him in the... Hit him in the rear... To get him out. So hopefully I didn't screw something up there. We'll see, though. Quick work on that. Simple, simple. Easy, easy. Nothing to see here, folks. Just a massive octopus. Alright, let's get these little ones now. I can kill these in 
in one go. But then there's all these fireflies hanging hanging around. Jeez. And then I also I saw over there there's a uh, there's a, a big troll guy. So we gotta go deal with him as well. But one thing at a time, one thing at a time. We'll we'll wrap this up first. How are there so many little guys? I keep thinking I got them all. See, I can even kill two of them with one swing. Must suck to suck. Little little octopus guys. And there's still more over there, my goodness. And I keep thinking that these these little just red flowers. I keep thinking that they're either Roa to pick up. Um, or I keep thinking too that they're the uh Arteria leaf. And I keep getting excited since Arteria is so rare. Alright, I will gladly take your turtleneck. Did you ever did you ever have you ever worn a turtle turtleneck before? Because I'm not a fan. I I have not worn a turtleneck in probably like 15 years, I would guess, is probably the timeline. Um, and I just don't enjoy turtlenecks. They kind of make me feel like I'm suffocating a little bit. I don't like the, the material on my neck. If you're if if you're a turtleneck kind of kind of guy or gal though, that's that's cool. Like, no judgment here. It's just not my thing. Okay, so there's that guy. So he's the one that actually, when we were down below in Limgrave, uh, he's the one that jumps down by those ruins when you walk by. So now we get to kill him from up here. And the the thing is, even though we're on Stormhill, I believe Stormhill, Stormhill is still technically considered Limgrave. So we're still really in Limgrave right now. Um, just a different part of it. And yeah, you can see nothing. Like, I'd love to be able to see here and see this view. But it's just not gonna happen. Alright, I just saw him duck down, so he's, he's aware of my presence. Just collecting everything around here first. All right, my friend, I'm going to take your Arteria Leaf real fast. Thank you for that. Don't stomp me. I would appreciate that. The scream, it doesn't scare me. I don't know what to tell you, but it just it just doesn't. You look all big and masculine and tough, but you're going to go down real quick. Or up. Oh, man. I accidentally jumped instead of rolled, and it still worked out. Speaking of jumping, I I mentioned a long time ago that I need to start using my jump attacks more, and I didn't really do that. Gotcha. All right, big fella goes down, and just above where we're at right now is the section where there's like like seven of those guys roaming about. So that'll that'll be fun to deal with that too. That's all that's a lot of fun actually. Alright, so all of this portion here is done. Let's go I don't think we can get up from here, so we're gonna need to go back down to near where the grace was. And there was a spot I'm getting stuck on things. There was a spot I, I basically walked almost to it. Right up, I think it's right up here. There are catacombs. So I guess let's let's go up here real fast and, and grab these. There's this whole section of landscape here too that we can explore. But let's open these up first. Head inside. And I think now, right over there, yeah, we can travel underneath the bridge that leads to that divine tower. Death touched catacombs. Ooh, and the beast eye quivers. So now that we've got the beast eye, we'll be able to tell when there's death root around. So that's sweet. Um. All right. So along here, yeah. So that's the that's the bridge that leads to the divine tower that we cannot even see, unfortunately. Um. All right. So I think 
rather though than actually going through these catacombs right now, now that I've at least got the grace there, I think we'll probably deal with that next episode. Let's go through this little camp here first. And this will probably wrap us up for today. So we'll conquer this, and I think right through here, this will lead over. Let's let's just run over here real fast, because over here is that spot that I've been talking about where all these guys are roaming. Yeah, so there's one there, one there, oh, two there. There's another one behind these ruins. Yeah, there's a lot around here. There's also a death bird that spawns here, but I think... I don't know if that death bird will spawn during the day. Will it? It might. This might be one that it doesn't have to be nighttime for it to spawn. Let's see. If I kind of run through this. Because I'd be, I'd be down for a death bird fight right now. Yeah, I mean, look at all these guys. One, two, three, four, five. So I think it's five then. It must just be five. That's still quite a lot, though. Will this guy spawn? I want him to spawn. He said it may be only a nighttime thing, though, so I may, I may need to come back here during the night to fight him, because he spawns literally, like, right here. Okay, yeah, it's got to be a nighttime thing. All right, so let's go, let's go do these, let's go do this real fast. Hack and slash our way through this. Get whatever, whatever items they're hiding around here. I think, I think there's some, I think there's probably some good stuff in here. I think there's also a lot of guys in here, too. And here's our first contender. That is extremely, extremely rude. Throwing firebombs at people. Didn't even get my first name first. It's Zaloran, by the way. Oh, he dropped a short sword. Oh, there's a there's a puppy. That's a very shaggy puppy, though. Crap. I can't kill the shaggy puppy. He just went all the way around to get back up to me. There you are. Here, just put your face put right on the flail. Just right on the flail. There you go. Gotcha. So it must just be these little guys in here. I thought that there were... Maybe there's a, a, a bigger guy hanging out in here somewhere. But yeah, it's mostly... Yeah, it's just these little guys that I've encountered so far. Little guys, little guys. Oh, I hear another dog, though. Oh, two dogs. Oh, and, yep, this is the guy that I was thinking of. I knew that there was a bigger guy in here, too. Okay, I'm gonna hop on out of here for a second. You guys can just... You can come on out here. We're gonna do this fight on my terms. Ooh. Nightman almost got me. Woo! I want to deal with all of these little things first before I uh, before I fight the big guy. Would you stop it? Getting stuck on people. Oh my goodness, he's got a reach. Frick! Dang it! Oh my goodness. I might die here. Oh, I'm getting stuck, but I'm getting stuck on things everywhere. There's so many things around here. My goodness. Holy crap. Man, when I said that there were a lot of of guys in this this camp, I was not kidding. I kind of thought I was kidding, though. I thought maybe I was remembering wrong. But I was not. Gotcha. All right. Whew. That got real hairy there for a second. Because I kind of just ran through there because, again, I, I was thinking, yeah, there's probably a lot of guys here, but I didn't think that there were going to be that many. They all just started coming out of the woodwork. Oh, and there's those things, those those bells. Good thing I didn't step on any of those. And just summon all of them at once. Oh, and there's a guy here. He heard the bells. Here at Santa's sleigh bell. Alright, I got my flashback, so that, that should be... Should be the last guy roaming about. So I think we've got everything covered. Man. Yeah, that was not that was not what I was expecting. Oh man, they've got they've got bells rigged up all around here. They're even back here. Alright, 
Alright, so what else does this place have? Ooh, there's a chest here. Just do my obligatory rolls through everything. Make sure there's nothing hiding. What do you got for me? Beast Crest Heater Shield. So what is that? Is that to... 100% damage negation, which is nice. Cool, so that will promptly go into my chest like all the other shields. Because I'm not a I'm not a weakling that hides behind a shield. Typically I am, but uh, not for this playthrough. Because we're we're making we're making this we're we're making this playthrough for the real the real players. And I'm here to exalted flesh. Only one though. I should uh. Can I craft Exalted Flesh now? Last time I looked, I couldn't. I can. Okay, good. Because uh, as we progress in the game here, like further on, I, I definitely like to use Exalted Flesh for boss fights. Just to, to get a little bit of a leg up on whatever I'm fighting. Okay, so this wraps back around into the camp. Um, I don't think I can get all the way to the top of that right now, and I don't... I don't I don't know that there's anything up there anyway. Oh, yeah, and you know what? I think right back here... I was kind of hoping to find one more grace before we wrap for today, and I think that we're almost to a grace over here. Oh, there's a Stake America right there. Yeah, there's a grace right there. Sweet. Alright, so... Let's check for all the items. What is, what is it that it's trying to get me to pick up? Oh, it's excrement! It's always one of the ones I, I swear I don't usually see the excrement on the ground. I just pick it up because I see the prompt. Um, and I think there's also... I think there's a guy sitting here too. That, that sells... I think he sells Ashes of War over by this grace. Um, so that could actually... Now that I think about it, that could be kind of good. There might be some stuff from him that I want to buy. I saw more excrement. There it is. Gotta get all the excrement. Alright, so let's pop over to this guy. This Grace. And is this where the guy's at? This is where he's at. Alright, so where is this technically? This is Warmaster Shack. Okay. And so we came from over here at Saints Bridge. between to take up the fight does your faith in the guidance of grace hold firm despite the collapse of the golden order yes you're a tarnished through and through takes me back but that's a quality needed now more than ever any interest in bearing the torch of my battle arts all I know is the sword picked up a fair few tricks in my time too Now's the time to pass them on to a good and proper tarnished like you. Alright, what's he got? So, uppercut, kick, endure, war cry. War cry gives a war cry to rally the spirit and increase attack power while active strong attacks change to charging attacks. Spinning slash, no skill, parry, storm blade. Lost skill of Stormvale surround armament with sh uh, shearing storm winds that can be fired forward, can be fired in rapid succession. That could be kind of cool. Oh, only usable on swords. Um, quick step. Skill prized by the crafty and fleet of foot. Perform a quick step maneuver that allows for circling around locked on targets and impaling thrusts. So which ones can I use? So axes, swords, axes, hammers, all melee weapons, all melee weapons. All melee weapons besides daggers, thrusting swords, and whips. Swords, axes, and pole arms. Um, oh, you can even use that on f on fists. That's cool. I would love to use that, but it's only for swords. And the quick step. The quick step could be kind of cool to experiment with. Um, I don't think... 
any of these. I don't think I care too much about these right now. There's a myriad of battle arts in these lands that I've yet to discover. Mementos of all the warriors who raised their arms in battle, lost and died. A fine tale, all told of true chivalric romance. That's how I fell in love with the sword and the arts of combat. It grants meaning even to falling in battle, to death itself. Not floating your boat, eh? Well, there's no rush. Knowledge of the arts can wait another day. Cool. All right. So we have exhausted his dialogue. So I need to remember to come back to him if I end up deciding that I want to switch my Ash of War. Because um, a couple of those are things that I, I might be interested in. Just right now, I don't see any that specifically interest me. So I'm going to level real fast. What do I need for a level? That should be enough, right? 11,000. Oh, I actually... No, I do need... Runes needed. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm good. I always look at the bottom number on accident. All right, so... Oh, no, I did look at the... Crap, I did look at the right number. What am I... What am I doing? So let's, let's just use this one. And now that I've leveled Faith a good bit, I should probably look and see which things I can now use that required Faith before. So I'm going to get that to 15... And I don't think any of the things that I wanted to use are usable yet. Uh, let me see. Let me just look through my inventory. Um, because I think the main thing I wanted to use was the madness. So some of this stuff. What here? So this is all in... Stuff I can't use here is intelligence stuff. And I haven't been leveling that yet. Um, this was the main one I wanted to use, was Flame of Frenzy, so I need one more level for that. Oh, and I have enough faith for that now, I just need to level my Arcane. Cool, and that's one I definitely want to use. Uh, and then this, I needed... Oh yeah, I need to get levels into Arcane for that. Because that's something that I very much want to start using. Cool, so we're almost there to be able to utilize that stuff. And I guess while I'm, while I'm sitting here, I might as well, uh... I might as well just use all of my runes, because I might be able to even get another level here, because I've got a lot of of the the rune ones. Let's use all 79. How much will that give me? I'm gonna guess 12,000. 15,800. Dang. Okay, we can definitely get a level here, and we'll be like half half of the way to another level. So if I put that at 16. Yeah, and we're like halfway to, to the next level. So if I put that at 16, that means that now... Oh, actually, I'm going to have to attune that, though. Or memorize it. Uh, so what do I want to... So I still use that. Scholar's Armament, I use that. I haven't been using the Carrion Slicer much. So let's put Flame of Frenzy on. Now, I know that when the game first dropped, Flame of Frenzy was ridiculous. Like, it was it was super OP. And I didn't know that, so I didn't use it. Um, at the same time, I wouldn't have really wanted to use it because it was so, so OP, to be honest. Um, but I want to try this on one of these guys real fast. Uh, and just see what it can do now. We'll give it a shot. Okay, that does that's pretty decent. That does decent damage. But you don't want to use it too heavily because of the fact that... Because of the fact that it, it builds your your madness level, or your frenzy level, I should say. Oh man, okay. And you definitely don't want to use it when he's getting ready to swing like that. Sweet. So that can actually hit him from kind of far away. That's that's useful against these guys. Because that staggered him pretty quickly both times. So, I think that that's a good tool to have in my tool belt. It looks like it, it, it uses a decent amount of FP, but nothing insane. Alright, now I want to have this guy come over here and break this, because there's upgrade materials in there. Alright, I just need you to swing right here. Nice, thank you. I'm going to use this real fast on you. Man. It's the only thing with it is how long it takes to fire. 
gotcha, but he also got me. So what kind of damage would this do if he's already down on the ground? That's pretty good, since he's just hanging out there. Gotcha! Cool, I like that a lot. I like that very much, so I'm definitely going to keep that. Smithing stone one. Oh, five smithing stone ones, and one smithing stone two. Nice. Okay. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap us for today. Uh, tomorrow, we'll continue our way through Stormhill. Um, we've got all this stuff back here to do, uh, and we can get all the way back to here. And, uh, and so we'll clear out all this landscape, and then we'll actually head into the castle. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, maybe hit subscribe, and leave a comment. That would be awesome. So thank you for watching, and I will talk to you tomorrow.